Hello and welcome back. In the last session, we looked at git aliases. So git aliases can be used when you want to create a custom shortcut for a frequently used git command. It's a one-time setup that can make your entire git workflow faster and more efficient. So at any point, if you have a long command, like in this case, this one, and if you want to create a shortcut for this, you can make use of your git aliases for that. For that. This can really help save time and make you more efficient in terms of your frequently used git commands. In today's session, we are going to talk about git LFS, which stands for large file storage. Have you ever tried to add a large file to your git repository, like a high resolution image, a video, a 3D model, or a large data set? If you have, you may have noticed that your repository becomes incredibly slow to clone and manage. This is because Git was not designed to handle large binary files. To solve this problem, we have Git LFS. It's a free and open source extension that makes it easy to work with large files without bloating your Git history. Now, before we dive into the details, if you found this content helpful, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow and allows me to keep making more videos just like this one. Let's get started with this. Now, first, let's talk about the problem with large files in Git. So Git is mainly built for source code, which is mostly text. When you make a small change to a text file, Git stores a tiny diff or delta of that change. With a large binary file, however, a single change means Git has to store a brand new full copy of the entire file in its history. So every time someone clones your repository, they have to download every single version of that large file, making the process painfully slow. So if you look at this repository, I have a couple of files over here. So this is one file and this is the other file. Now this is a little over 60 MB and this is over 100 MB in size. Now, ideally, your Git allows you to have your files up to a maximum of 100 MB. So in this case, let's say if I try adding this file, so let's say I will add, I will commit this. So you can immediately see how slow this is because of the size of the files. So let me commit this. So let's say before using Git. LFS and we will try pushing this so git push origin main and git will throw an error git will not allow me to upload these files because these are uh, this particular file is over the size limit and uh, this one it will give me a warning telling like hey uh, git recommends you to have a certain size but it will go ahead and upload it because this is still below the limit but that's that's one problem. The other problem what happens is because of the size, if others are using this project like they when they try to clone the repository or work with the repository, the repository becomes really slow. The clone operation can be very slow, which can be very painful for other developers. So in this case, if you can see, this is trying to write the objects and it's it's very slow, right? Because of the size. All right, so here. You can see so i've got a warning so for this particular file which is around 60 mb so it is telling like hey this is larger than the recommended size which is 50 mb so it's still a warning so it is telling like okay you know you're going above the uh, recommended size but if you look at the other file it is rejecting it because it is over the file size limit which is 100 mb so the maximum you can have is 100 mb so how do we solve this so this is where we have your git LFS. So git LFS solves this problem by changing how a git stores the file. So instead of storing this large file within the repository, it stores a small text-based pointer file that contains a unique identifier for the large file. The actual file is stored on a separate git LFS server. So this git LFS is a separate server which your GitHub manages and these large files will be stored in that server with a pointer to those files within your repository. So when a developer clones or pulls from the repository, Git 
gets the small pointer file and then git lfs handles the job of downloading the actual large file from the dedicated lfs server on demand this keeps your git repository small and fast while allowing you to version large assets with the rest of your code. So let's look at how you can set this up. So the first thing is you will need to install the git lfs command line tool. The installation process is straightforward and it depends on your operating system. So if you're on Mac OS, you can use this brew install git hyphen lfs. And if you're on Linux, Ubuntu or Debian, you can use this apt install git lfs. And on Windows, you can use this winget install git dot git lfs command. So in our case, we have an Ubuntu machine. So let me quickly update the machine first. And then you can run this app to install git uh, lfs. In my case, uh, the tool is already installed. Uh, if it's not there, then it will go ahead and install the tool for us. So my installation is done. After installation, you need to run a one time command to set up git lfs in your local git environment. For that, you can run this git lfs install command. And this, this is a one time command, and this will initialize the git lfs for us. Next step will be for us to tell git lfs which type of files do you want to track. So, in this case, you know, like all these are there, but uh, we are specifically looking for these two files. So you need to tell like, hey, these are the files that I want you to track. So for this, you can do that by using this git lfs track command. So you will, you can specify a file type using a wildcard. So in this case, let's say you can either give the file name or you can make use of a wildcard. So in our case, let's say star dot png. So basically any file that ends with the uh, dot the png extension so you can see tracking demo dot png so basically it found only one file so likewise let's say git lfs track and then uh, star dot msi and then it is tracking the second file for us so likewise you will need to tell what files you want git lfs to track so you can either give the um, actual file name or you can make use of the wildcard now, when you run this command, git lfs automatically creates a file called uh, .git attributes in the root of your directory. Now, this file contains the rules for which files to track and you should add and commit this file to your repository. Now, before we do that, if you look at the uh, file, it will basically contain your attributes. So, you can see demo.png and then the other file that we have. So whatever uh, you're telling git lfs to track, it will add those files within this .git attributes. Now for this to work, we will need to add and commit this file. For that, we can simply use our normal git workflow. So git will automatically know to handle the large files differently. So all we have to do is do a git add, do a git uh, commit. So let's say demo for large files using git lfs and then we will push this now when we run this command i will not get the warning as well as the error because git will use the um, lfs in the background to uh, upload the files and handle those files for us so during this git push command git will send the small dot git attributes file and the pointer to your main repository while git lfs will handle the upload of the large um, uh, png file and the msi file to the lfs server in the background so now here you will observe that you no longer see the warning for the demo.png and the error that we had for this particular file is also gone this is because git is now using the lfs server in the background to push these large files to the lfs server so now if you go back to your repo let's refresh this so now here in the repository you can see your files are available but how do you see this in your lfs server so for that you can go to your profile go to settings and here under your billing and license you can go to overview 
Now, under the overview here, you can see this Git LFS. Now, this is where you can see how much of storage you have used and what is your bandwidth. Now, this can take some time for uh, to to update to reflect the actual usage. It's not uh, uh, synchronous; it is asynchronous. But this is where you can see as to what is the LFS storage you have used, uh, what how much is remaining, and all those things. All right. So to sum it up, Git LFS can be really useful when you are dealing with large files and you want to keep them in your Git repository. So by default. Git does not allow you to um, uh, push a file which is more than 100 MB. But if you still want to push, then you can make use of your Git LFS. So with Git LFS, your repository remains clean and fast. And you can collab collaborate on projects with large assets just as easily as you would with source code. This is a must-have tool for teams working on games, uh, video production, design, and data science projects. And that brings us to the end of this session. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more content and let me know in the comments section if you have any queries. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next session.